I would like to start with the story of a young boy called Ramesh. He was a farmer's son from Ratnagiri, Maharashtra. All his life, he was told, go to school, be an obedient student, get good marks, and then you'll get admission in a good college, in an engineering college. And then you must learn how to stand straight, how to speak good English, groom yourself, and then you'll get a good job. So Ramesh did all of that. Now, one day, the day, the day that almost every student in India prepares for, for 14 years, 12 to 14 years of their life, the meeting with the recruiter. So now Ramesh, from a low middle class family, that job is very important for him, not just for money, because usually what job you get defines what kind of marriage proposals you will get, what will be your societal status, Chacha Mama will be happy and all of that. So that meeting is really important, right? So he walks in, he walks in, stands straight, wears a suit, uh, shakes hands, says good morning, 14 years of his life, I repeat, he has prepared for that moment. Recruiter opens the file and uh, Ramesh in his pre-placement training has been trained to say, Sir, I have this degree, I have done this certification, I went to this college festival, I participated in this, I headed that committee and so on. Because Ramesh has been programmed to think that these are all the things that, that you need to score that job. And that recruiter says, Are bhai, kuch aur to batao, tum admi ho ki robot, tumhare peche, peche bhi jo bees aye te, ohi bol rahe. That's the response he gets. So imagine, 14 years of your life, you've been told, do all of these things. And the response you get is, tumhare jaise 250 rows milte hai, tumhare paas aur kya hai. Now Ramesh has no answer. He has not been trained to say, what else do I have? He has just been trained to say, I scored my A plus in, in my computer science degree. I did all of these things. And Ramesh didn't get the job. Now let's flip the story. The recruiter who worked for a very new age ed tech employer also lost his job. Because that recruitment cycle, he couldn't find what his founder wanted him to find smart generalists because all he got were 250 Rameshes essentially he lost his job friends I am here to tell you today the world of work is changing many factors which we will get into why and how but as a result of the change the only qualification that matters in the age of artificial intelligence will be your natural intelligence. And because Mr. Bhagat is here, I would say it is the age of ranchos and not Chatur Ramalingams. So, what's happening, there are three big reasons why Ramesh, which essentially, who essentially represents about 3.8 crore graduates in the country and we have 3.8 crore graduates enrolled in India's 55,000 or colleges why Ramesh's future is at risk the first and the most obvious answer that we all have been reading about automation so any task that is programmable where there is certainty A leads to B leads to C is eventually going to be automated and not just physical tasks intellectual tasks so today, in many parts of the world, companies employ robot accountants, algorithms as accountants, algorithms as administrators, algorithms as customer service executives. Because anything where there is certainty is going to be automated. Only those tasks where B comes before A and X might come after D, which is essentially uncertainty, asymmetry, is what humans will be required for. So automation is a big threat to Ramesh's of the world, of the country in specific. Because if you have just been trained 
to follow process that process is going to be automated now that's a threat we cannot fight as an employer myself i would find it any day more efficient cost effective to engage an algorithm because an algorithm doesn't take leaves algorithm doesn't have to go for weddings algorithm doesn't have to go uh, you know need a break so i i would rather employ an algorithm so automation is a big risk to ramesh's of the world but there is something else which are these new innovative business enterprises like mine and i'll get into what i do in a bit think about it right good or bad an oyo achieved the kind of valuation in 3 to 5 years that probably a tata group took 20 years again we will leave the the the, the business sense out for this moment so obviously somebody who has to work in new age enterprises the expectations are going to be very different because every day in that company is different today a coder doesn't just code a coder has to apply emotional intelligence to understand the user has to collaborate with the business team to define and design features that that aim at generating and delivering revenue a business development expert also has to work with the product developer so whatever that you have learned will not be enough will not be sufficient because it will expire because in new age enterprises every challenge every funding round is a different story altogether so automation and new age business models are big risks to ramesh's of the country so what is it that new age employers want what they really want are a set of people who can think communicate solve independently smartly and creatively companies today seek candidates who are able to operate in uncertainty which yet algorithms and robots cannot because every customer every new funding round like i said every new product evolution will be different nobody would have been trained for it for example somebody who's been trained to work in a conventional bank will have to think creatively if he or she has to work in a ptm or a new age fintech company because the principles are different right and and and, and these are things that cannot be taught because because these are creative emotional functions so what i'm here to tell you because i am addressing an audience of university students like i said how you think solve will matter a lot more than just what you know i'm not here to say that your degree is not important i'm not here to say that don't study i'm here to say that that something more is now going to be required and that something more will continuously evolve therefore your greatest asset to succeed and even to survive in the new world of work will be your own creative and emotional and critical intelligence and if you do not focus on sharpening that it's not going to be an easy ride and we look all around you you know uh, thousands of people are being laid off all around you and who's the first one to get laid off the one who is not able to contribute above and beyond who is the one who's retained and promoted the one the coder who can think of feature ideas the coder who can go and pitch to an investor and convince on behalf of the company about the robustness of the the code behind the platform those are the kind of people who will succeed a designer who understands business realities a business development expert who also can collaborate with the tech team to build a customer friendly product these are the kind of people who will succeed and for that your natural intelligence is what is most important but there's something else as well purpose so there is an interesting um, phenomena happening so in 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 scandinavia they did this experiment with a concept called universal basic income where they picked a group of people and they said we will pay you and you don't have to work because there will be a future not so far away 
due to automation where fewer number of people will be required in the workforce. Now, what do people do? So you give them food, clothing, shelter, but you still need something to do. In this experiment, they found that people were more miserable getting free money than struggling to earn money. Because in that struggle, you're still moving towards something. In getting free money and getting your free food and so on, you're not doing anything. Purpose, along with your own natural intelligence, will be very critical because when you attach purpose to your career, to what you do, the why behind your career choice, beyond just the salary package, beyond just the name of the company, you will be in able to invest more of your creative, emotional and critical intelligence to that job. If, if, if a teacher does not align with the purpose of teaching for the love of teaching, it does definitely reflect in, in, in how they teach their students, right? If a chef does not attach purpose of creating the best dishes or the most innovative dishes, it reflects in their food. Similarly, as a coder, if your purpose is not to create some significant form of, of, of software, if as a designer your purpose is not to create the best design ever, it will reflect in your work. And when you're not able to contribute above and beyond, like I said, you're going to unfortunately become professionally irrelevant. So purpose is very, very, very important in making your career decisions because it will reflect in your work, it will reflect in your motivation to use your intelligence to achieve outcomes above and beyond. Because we find in our work that the people, the two, the two big factors of why people don't get hired, don't get promoted or get laid off is one, like where they don't show interest in their job and their choice architecture in choosing that job was just the package and just, just the name of the company and not really passionate about doing anything. So purpose and a consistent effort to sharpen and apply your own creative, emotional and critical intelligence in your work is what is going to help you thrive and survive in this new world of work. Now, let me tell you a bit about what I do and why I am here and why am I talking about this. Like most teachers here would say, rightly so, and employers, these soft skills, essentially what I am saying is new age soft skills, they cannot be taught. You cannot show people a set of videos and master classes on emotional intelligence and suddenly people will become emotionally intelligent. If that were the case, then each husband would send their wife and wife would send their husband to classes on emotional intelligence and it would, they would become emotionally intelligent. But it doesn't work like that. You can't suddenly become creative by seeing a master class by Mark Zuckerberg even. It's not, it's not true. So at Experience Skills Lab, my company, we're building something called the Workverse. When Metaverse launched, I was really afraid for the world. What's going to happen? But then I said, if it's happening anyways, how can I use the same concept of creating simulated environments to teach these skills through experience, which is essentially how you learn, so that before any college student goes and joins the workplace, goes for that interview, he or she already has an experiential foundation in how to deal with situations that you're not taught. So we're building something called the Workverse, where essentially students of colleges assume the role of entry-level associates in a company and they experience all those things from tackling office politics to pitching to bosses to, to impressing tough bosses um, to, to cracking business deals, everything that you would essentially do within the first six months of your workplace, you do in this Workverse. So that when that recruiter asks you, or kya, you can tell him, aapke investor se mein baat kar sakta hun. Main client ko jaake bina dare pitch kar dunga, crisis hogi khud solve kar lunga, kyunki mein ne kiya hai, degree nahi, mere paas, we give something called the workplace intelligence profile, which essentially is observing how in that simulated environment you are solving and creating data about your intellectual competency. Because what does 
a degree say unique about each student but this workplace intelligence profile will actually observe you it's and it's not even a psychometric test imagine a psychometric test people can game but here over 30 45 days in this simulated environment you're going to be mapped on how you're solving problems how you're taking your decisions how you are responding, how you are storytelling, how you are applying emotional intelligence and it produces that profile. So when you go to the recruiter, you can say, Mera workplace intelligence profile dekhiye. Recruiter ke paas bhi abhi to nahi hoga. So obviously you are going to, he's going to get wowed. But I am not here excited by the technological aspect of my mission. I'm not excited by the fact that I'm building a metaverse and you know, it's, today it's going to be a simulated environment through mobile phone, then it will be through VR glasses. In fact, all of that scares me to be very honest. But I want to put this in the hands of Ramesh from Ratnagiri. Why is it, why is it that only boys and girls from elite institutions get the required exposure to compete for aspirational jobs. Why? Just because you are from an IIT doesn't make you smarter than somebody from a ABC IT. No. Just because you were born in intellectual privilege, you could speak good English, you got some exposure so you can think smartly, so you get to work in a Google at an aspirational role. No, that's wrong. Even a farmer's son from Punjab, a, a, a rickshaw driver's daughter in Karnataka in some rural village, she should also get the required exposure to compete for and succeed in aspirational jobs. So my mission with this work was, is to put it in the hands of youth in tier 2, tier 3 cities, tier 2, tier 3 college institutions, so that they, in that simulation, get the required intellectual exposure, sharpening of their creative intelligence so that they can also aspire for the high office one day. And the proof of the success is this Ramesh was not a fictitious story, he was part of our pilots. Today Ramesh works as a product developer at Google and he credits the exposure he got in the work was as a way to not only get the job but him able to respond and understand things that he otherwise wouldn't. So friends, well, to conclude, I would like to say, focus for professional success, focus on what makes you human, which is your creativity, your purpose, your entrepreneurship, because that's what's going to get you ahead in the world of work. Thank you.